Hey guys, it's time to do the full review of the Galaxy A7 2016 edition here. So uh, I've been getting a lot of requests uh, for this video and uh, and also some other videos like I should compare it with the uh, A7 2015 and A8 and all that. So I'm going to be making those uh, videos uh, pretty soon. Uh, so be patient a little bit. So uh, let's start off this review first of all uh, from the, uh, of course, display size here. The size, so 5.5 inch display here. Uh, this is a 5.5 inch 1080p display. Extremely nice quality. If we take a close up here, overall colors wise and all that, you can see here. So 5.5 inch uh, display size, meaning that this phone is, of course, a phablet phone or phablet category device. It's a big phone. Uh, you can uh, use it pretty easily uh, with one hand uh, because because the way they made this phone uh, It's really nice. It's screen to body ratio and all that and also if we take a, take a closer look at the display here It's kind of like it's a it's a little bit uh, Edged you know a little bit roundish. It's not like plain, you know if I compare it with uh, with any other phone Let's say the Galaxy S uh, 6 here the display is just flat okay at the end while well, this one has a little bit of uh, edged effect so or roundish effect whatever you want to call it it's, it's, it's pretty cool you know so yeah um, I'm loving the display overall so we have glass on the back uh, so that's the major change in terms of the design from the last year instead of you know full instead of making the device full metallic they, they made the made a glass back I believe this is a Gorilla Glass 4, but that's not confirmed, you know, uh, but I read somewhere that it has Gorilla Glass 4. So uh, the major design language is from this phone, the Papa Galaxy Note 5. So yeah, also if you, you take a look at the colors and all that, uh, we also have the same position of the flash in it, uh, for the flash. Uh, and also now we also get uh, this uh, speaker at the bottom. Uh, with the 3.5 mm headphone jack here and also charging port and uh, we also do have a uh, one sim card tray here uh, this is the sim card tray uh, sim card tray number one with the uh, micro SD card and we also get a uh, sim card number two on the top of the phone which means that you can actually insert two sim card cards and a one micro SD card at the same time on this phone so which I think it was it wasn't possible in the last year's uh, phones the a5 and the a7 so now it's possible so uh, also you know a lot of people wanted to know that so yeah it's possible you can insert the sim card and the SD card here and the sim card number two up there so let's move towards move towards the fingerprint sensor here uh, the home button the new home button now we do have fingerprint sensor on the galaxy a5 and the galaxy a7 here uh, uh, it is absent on the a3 uh, so sorry for the a3 users of course uh, so this might not be a big deal for a lot of people like fingerprint sensor but but it's really nice that they've included it because they, these devices really cost a lot here in my country so yeah, we do have it. It's nice. I'm really not that impressed by its uh, performance so far. I mean, uh, when it comes to fingerprint sensor, sometimes it's it feels a little bit slow. Uh, maybe it's because I have uh, you know other phones, other flashy phones that have fingerprint sensor. Uh, so you know, compared to them, it feels a little bit slower, uh, like Nexus 6P especially. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, nonetheless, it's there and it is overall it's good to have it. Uh, increases the security and all that so uh, this is Android 5.1.1 lollipop it's not marshmallow so even though it's a new 2016 Samsung phone uh, but it has still has uh, the Android 5.1.1 lollipop if we check out the uh, the software information and yes it is 5.1.1 lollipop I'm gonna be doing a full um, full tips and tricks video uh, so yeah Make sure you stay tuned for that. We have these touch buttons here. We have uh, we also have this dedicated button for the multitasking here to access this menu. 
and you also have this close all button so software is uh, nice of course touch whiz and the good thing about it is that that we really have less bloatware I mean when I first you know powered up this device uh, it had only one page of apps so uh, they really uh, you know removed the bloatware out of it so and now I have these applications that I've installed so um, overall I like this uh, TouchWiz UI, it's nice, but it still has that uh, RAM issue, you know, when you open a lot of apps. I'm sure you guys have watched my speed test comparison that I did uh, with the uh, with this phone here, Galaxy Note 5, so uh, you might want to check that one out in order to see its performance. So uh, basically, uh, this one has that the same RAM issue uh, that, you know, when you open up a lot of apps, it, it closes them up in order to increase the battery life which people are saying this is like a RAM management issue and something like that but of course uh, not a lot of people are going to up open you know, like 10 apps at the same time uh, you know if you open like two or three apps like Instagram and Facebook and uh, uh, you 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 might not see any problem with this uh, also we get like three gigs of RAM inside for the multitasking uh, which is also good uh, feels future-proof a little bit because you know on Android you need more RAM to have more better performance it's not iOS uh, so yeah software is good this is how the lock screen look like uh, if you have this fingerprint sensor you can't really see that effect here we got two shortcuts uh, one for the camera and one for the for the phone dialer and this is just a normal uh, Samsung's UI, normal Samsung's uh, quick settings which you can also edit. So we also do get the uh, power saving mode on this phone. Uh, power saving mode, if we go to the main settings you can see here this is a normal power saving mode. Uh, we also do have ultra power saving mode if you go here into battery section. You can see here ultra power saving mode is there. So Overall software is nice, but it, it needs some changes uh, that will come uh, with the Marshmallow. So uh, it has Exynos 7580 chipset. Uh, that uh, This is an octa-core mid-range Exynos uh, chipset powered by Meli T720 GPU, which is uh, pretty much enough to handle the games at a good FPS. I've also did a gaming test. You can check that out on my channel. So. Uh, you're not going to have any problem in terms of performance, but comparing to other phones like Note 5, definitely it's not that strong as compared to, uh, compared to phones like Note 5 and Xperia Z5 Premium and all those phones. But it, it holds up pretty nicely for its price. Uh, it is definitely a, a phone uh, with, uh, with a processor that is capable of doing everything. And, uh, and I haven't seen any lag in terms of UI or anything like that. Uh, so I think main attraction point of this phone here is its uh, its design and its build quality, which is just super good. And also uh, uh, another thing that is really good that has, that you know I think is also one of the best thing uh, thing on its on this phone as equal to the build quality is the battery life. It's just so amazing, you know. Uh, even though it's a phablet phone, they, they put like a 3,300 milliamp hour battery, which is even more than the Note 5. So we get a bigger battery, uh, means better battery life. And, uh, and you know, uh, when I f started this video, of course, it was like on 41%. And, you know, I did some takes and still you can see it's 39%. So that's pretty nice overall. Uh, and it will survive up to one day plus, I mean one day plus easily uh, if you watch like YouTube videos, play a little bit game, then games and listen to music and then, you know, stand by and all that. Uh, you know, the way I use my phone, uh, this, this, this phone can easily survive up to one day plus. So, um, you know, I've been using this phone for three to four days. Uh, you know when I made the unboxing so I've been using the, all, all these A3 phones a lot so they really are uh, good when it comes to overall um, optimization with the software except the RAM stuff optimization with the software and apps and all that I had never seen any crashing or anything any 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 funny stuff with the software uh, so uh, if we also talk about the camera here which is 13 megapixel uh, which uh, can record up to 1080p 
there's no 4K capabilities, uh, which is uh, kind of a disappointment because even the S5 can record a 4K video. So I don't know why Samsung uh, didn't put that option here on the A5 and the A7. Uh, so, but but you know, 4K that not, it might not be a big deal for again for a lot of people because for a 4K display. Uh, you, you must have to have like a 4k monitor to get that uh, to see that quality uh, so 1080p is also not that bad um, not bad at all it, it, I, I did a video I did a camera review of the a7 a5 and the a3 you can check it out uh, on my channel on the front we get a 5 megapixel sensor here which is uh, I think quality wise it, it is definitely uh, they haven't improved it you know uh, it's still the same but it's nice overall uh, in terms of quality wise if we take a look at the uh, camera UI here uh, this is where the major change comes up okay so uh, for example if we first take a look at the mode uh, mode section here we do have now a dedicated mode for uh, dedicated mode which is called as pro mode for changing the uh, white balance and all that stuff so that's nice and also you can have like a HDR mode where you can capture photos uh, in uh, up to 8 megapixels so it's kind of shame that you can't really increase the uh, resolution in the HDR mode it's only uh, up to 8 megapixel so and uh, and personally I haven't seen any big difference between the HDR shot and the normal auto shot so I like to keep uh, things simple take photos uh, in the uh, in in the normal mode here this normal auto mode also you can change the effects there you can apply different effects to your photos uh, you can also uh, see that if I go into settings we do have the option to disable the quick launch which is of course if you double press the uh, home button you can launch the camera so uh, yeah I, I'm overall really uh, impressed by this camera sensor uh, on the back and on the front uh, on the front you can also record 1080p HD video uh, it's nice it has a nice camera quality overall when it comes to outdoor uh, really matches up to its price uh, but compared to phones like Note 5 you will see slight differences here and there but definitely uh, you know people they really care about the the front camera you know I mean back camera is nice and good but nowadays people really take selfies when they have you know normal hangouts so front camera is nice it even has a wide selfie mode uh, also has a uh, mode uh, which is you know which you where you can uh, show your palm to capture selfie that was previously called as palm selfie mode but now it's called a little bit different uh, term so uh, we can take a look at that so if we open up the camera here uh, we have this button right here to switch to the front camera going into the modes and let's see here uh, there we go with the wide selfie and uh, you can switch that if you have like uh, a lot of person a lot of people are sitting you know in a row so you can use that mode and also we have that palm mode uh, which is I think always on yes that's that palm mode is always on uh, when you pick the phone up to your close to your face show your palm like this it will going to capture the selfie for you so now you don't really have to uh, you know um, switch to a different mode so you can just show your hand to get that selfie for you guys uh, for yourself so price of this phone is uh, 54,000 PKR uh, 53,000 PKR uh, to be accurate which is almost like five thirty dollars so um, yeah, it's really difficult to first, you know, decide whether if you want to buy this one or let's say Galaxy S6, which also has the same price point. Uh, so, I mean, it, it does give you a new type of design like the Note 5. Uh, you know, some people, they hate the S6 design, so it can be a good thing for you guys. I mean, f for those who are interested in this new design, also has, uh, you know, SIM card tray, uh, which uh, is pretty damn good I mean even though having this awesome build quality still has the uh, micro SD card support which is definitely something that is not available for the uh, with the S6 so uh, yeah it's just uh, you know I think the price price wise it, it is absolutely uh, what it offers you know it's absolutely good uh, for the price 
So yeah, I'm going to be doing a lot of comparisons uh, of this phone with other phones also. So uh, make sure you subscribe so that you can uh, get the full uh, detail about this phone, you know, whether you really want to buy this phone or not. So uh, my experience with this phone uh, is for, uh, for four days now, it's been really awesome. And, uh, and yeah, that's just wraps up this video. I'm going to be doing a similar review for the Galaxy A3 and the A5. And I will catch you guys in my next video. Peace out.